Welcome to Rise and Shine, your daily business tech boost with me, Charlie Latham. If you're a small business owner looking to simplify technology and get real, actionable advice from someone with 35 years of IT experience, you're in the right place. Every episode, I'll dive into tools and systems like email, CRM, marketing and tracking, and I'll break them down into bite-sized tips you can use straight away. Your time is valuable, so let's get straight to the point. It's time to work smarter, not harder. Rise and shine, get your dose of business tech inspiration with me, Charlie Latham. Episode number 601, we're going to talk about BitLocker, what it is and how you recover your keys when you need to. Now, why am I bringing this up? Let me share a screenshot that I got yesterday afternoon. There we go. There's the screenshot. This is a photograph of my poor client's computer. They were slightly beside themselves when they got this message. Uh, and I can understand why. They had been traveling all week. They'd been away all week. Got on the plane yesterday morning to come back. No, it's yesterday morning when I'm recording, not yesterday morning when you guys are seeing this. Yesterday morning to come back. Got home, plugged in their laptop after traveling, and this is what they're, re they're greeted with. BitLocker, enter your recovery key to get going again. And it's got a whole heap of information in there. It's got a recovery key ID. It's got a device label. And it's got some URLs there that you can go to. Now, they've just logged in. They haven't... They, they, Fortunately, they had a, a backup computer, but they've got their phone and they've got their laptop. And this is what they're greeted with. Seven o'clock at night, they're a little bit beside themselves. I can't blame them. I would be stressing as well, thinking, oh my goodness, is my computer hacked? What is it? I, when I first got this, thought, I wonder if this is a Trojan attack. And I went through it. And no, no, it's not a ransomware. It, this is actually legit. This is a real thing that can happen to Windows computers. So let's go through what BitLocker is uh, and what happens when you're greeted with this sort of thing. So BitLocker is a function, a service that comes with the Microsoft product suite that encrypts your hard drive. If the computer is lost or stolen or the device or the drive is removed, data cannot be read without the recovery key. Now this is this is a good thing until this happens. <laughs> so this is a good thing. What this does is this means that if you've got a computer and you've got your information on the computer and someone steals your, your computer, you can actually log into your Microsoft account, go to this computer under your devices and say, disable it. And it will actually stop people being able to access the computer because they don't have the BitLocker key. Unfortunately, how many of us actually, A, know we've, whether we've got BitLocker turned on on our computers and B, whether, um, how many of us have our keys. So this, this, this episode, I'm not going to actually go through a whole heap on how to get all of this information. I want to talk about it and I want to talk about where you can start and what you need to do. And the reason I don't want to go into too much detail on how to do it depends on whether you've got a work and business account and whether that's running uh, in tune or Entra or whether you've got a personal account. I will probably end up doing a longer series on this because it is quite in depth. Uh, and of course, I need to have access to systems so that I can show you all this, but let's talk about it anyway. So BitLocker can be enabled in a couple of ways. The most common way I would think for small business owners like ourselves, because we go out, we buy our computers, we set them up ourselves, we pull them out of the box and we do our own setup. It's normally done manually under your control panel. So if you go to control panel, BitLocker drive encryption and settings, privacy and security, you'll see whether it says you've got encryption enabled or not. I would absolutely recommend at a very minimum, everyone goes, if you can, if you don't want to go through that sort of link that I just gave you, go to the search bar at the bottom and just type in BitLocker. It will come up with a, with a control panel setting. You can go in and have a look and see whether you've got it enabled or not. It can be enabled manually. It probably is enabled manually. I should also mention that uh, if you have an Intel 6th generation and above chipset in your computer, so that that's the processor level, the 6th gen and above 
processor or an AMD Ryzen 2000 and above, your computer will unlock automatically if you've got BitLocker enabled. If you've got anything below that, uh, you will probably have to enter a, a password manually or a password um, or have a USB stick with a key written to it. Now, I, I'm mentioning that because some of you will say, well, I don't need to do all of that, so I, I don't have BitLocker on. Just make sure you don't. Make sure you don't have it. it hasn't been enabled automatically and that your chipset will support it. If you want to go and enable BitLocker after this podcast, just remember those two things because every time you, if you don't have a 6th gen Intel device, sorry, Intel processor or an AMD Ryzen 2000 and above, both of those, you will be required to enter a password every time you reboot your computer, every time you access your computer, oh, sorry, yeah, restart your computer. So just bear that in mind. I, I just wanted to get that one out there. So it normally, you, you, to me, you'd probably man, uh, enable it manually. It might be automatic uh, when you have purchased the computer and it's been set up for you. Or if you have a business computer that's been provided to you by your IT department, they may be enforcing that on all devices using Active Directory or Entra or uh, Entra ID or Azure AD or Intune. They're the three sorts of products that Microsoft offer that will allow them to manage devices from a central point of view. So just go and check whether you've got BitLocker enabled or not. If you are a small business owner and you aren't part of a larger organization that manages BitLocker, you should be paying attention to the fact that you've got it enabled and make sure you understand where you can get your key if this ever occurs, if this, this happens to you. Uh, you can also, once you've, once you've gone into that BitLocker setting in control panel, you can also turn it off or pause it. Uh, if you turn it off, uh, it'll de decrypt the device and you lose the ability to disable it if you lose your computer. So where do you find your keys? If once, once, once you've worked out whether you've got it on or not, where do you find your keys? Well, they're under your Microsoft account. You go to uh, account.microsoft.com slash devices. I send you in there. Now, I've, the notes I have here say recovery key. On this screen, it actually has a URL of aka.ms slash, I think it's AAD recovery key. Uh, that that will take you to the, the business and school one because this was a business and school account. Uh, most of us, we can just get in through our account.microsoft.com slash devices option. Now, if you log in as a personal account, you will get a slightly different screen to what you get as a business account. Either way, it doesn't matter. You're going to have a devices screen there. You need to click on that devices screen and it will show you what computers you have that are encrypted using BitLocker and you will be able to get the key out of there. You will also be able to save the key to a data stick, a little USB key. And if this ever occurs again, you can put the USB key in, reboot the computer, and it should give you what it needs. It should just unlock for you. You'll have to follow a few prompts and it should unlock. I'm sort of glossing over this because there it, it's quite in depth. What I really want you to take from this though is that if you get this screen, don't panic. As long as you have access to your Microsoft account, you can get past this. Uh, what's the other things that I want to just consider here? Let me just come back and have a chat to you. I've got a couple of notes here that I want to sort of look at. Uh, what, what is BitLocker actually supported on? So I've already mentioned that you've got to have a sp specific chipset for it to unlock automatically. Uh, BitLocker comes, full BitLocker comes on Windows 10 or 11 Pro Enterprise or Education. You can have limited device encryption uh, on Windows 10 and 11 Home, Windows Home, as long as you've got uh, that, that chipset that supports it. Uh, it's not available on Windows Home if your chipset doesn't it doesn't support that that automatic unlocking. Is it a good thing? Yeah, I think it's a good thing. I think it's something that you should consider using. I, I really do. I do think though that before you run on and just turn it on and say, "Oh, my my device is protected now," understand how you can get back into it if the worst happens and you and your device gets locked 
and you've got to go and re-enter that bit locker key as happened the other night last night for me um i guess the other thing about, about that one is it make sure you know what your password to or your part make sure you've got access to your microsoft account that's what i'm trying to say make sure you know your password or make sure you've got pass keys set up make sure you've got a password manager that you can access outside of the computer that, that, that it's saved on uh, that's one that's why i use zoho vault is because i can have it on my phone and it doesn't matter where i am I, i've got access to my passwords if i need them uh, there are other password managers that work equally as well if some some work better some work they work differently that's what i'm trying to say uh, password managers are probably the best way to go uh, i've spoken before about saving your passwords in the password managers for your browsers i highly don't recommend doing so why as evidenced they only had access to their password manager on their browser on that computer they hadn't signed up they hadn't synced it across their, their their browser account chrome or uh, firefox i'm not saying i'm going to say which one it was uh, chrome or firefox you can have your password synced across your account so you can log in on any device and get access to your passwords they hadn't done that so they had to remember what their password was now how did they get around it that's a great question they had a spare computer that's the first thing they had a spare computer uh, or a second computer, not a spare computer. They had a second computer. They powered that up. They had access to their Microsoft account through there. They got into their Microsoft account. They got their key. They had to copy manually. They had to manually sit there and type the key from the screen on one device into the one that had actually locked itself. It's not easy. It can be a little sickening. I, I can imagine the nausea that is felt when when you get presented by a screen like that particularly when that's your life particularly when your business requires you to have that and it needs to be running and you don't really you can't afford to lose the data that's on that that hard drive or on that computer or access to that computer because even you know going out and buying a new one not only is it a couple of thousand dollars you've got to go out and buy a new one uh, and it's all time and it's all energy and it's all effort all right, so BitLocker, it's a good thing. It encrypts your hard drive. It allows you to disable the drive if your computer is ever stolen. So it's not just that, you know, that the computer's stolen. You can actually get in and say, no, turn it off, disable it. They can't get into the computer. The computer is next to useless to them. Now they may end, your computer may end up being damaged as a result of it. I would prefer that and people actually accessing data and being able to get access to my systems through my hard drive or through my computer. The downside, you need to know what your key is. You need to be able to recover it in the case that the drive does get locked. I guess the, the final question on that is why did it occur? Now, that that's a great question. We don't know what the answer is. We, we don't know why it occurred this time. The... Uh, conjecture i will take is based on everything i've read a support update went through on saturday night sunday morning and we suspect that bitlocker got disabled as part of that update and it didn't quite finish and it didn't re-enable bitlocker therefore when they went to log in bitlocker had been disabled and because bitlocker had been disabled or turned off or paused whatever it is they were being asked to re-enter their key. It hadn't decrypted their drive. It had just turned BitLocker off so that they couldn't get back in. That's what we tipped had happened. Uh, the other thing is that you might, someone might have gone in and tried to disable it uh, on the computer and not decrypted the drive when they'd done it. Therefore, when they had attempted that, and therefore the drive was still encrypted, but BitLocker wasn't running. So they didn't have the ability to sync to the account and say, yep, this is this drive is, is is legit we can use it there's there's some conjecture it is just conjecture we won't really know uh because we're not going to go in and do any forensics on it hadn't the, the 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 chain of ownership the chain of handling hadn't changed she'd had it with her all the time so it's not like someone's gone in and changed it on her we suspect that a a update a microsoft update caused it to happen it happens it is recoverable. 
thing to remember is don't panic and make sure you know how to access your Microsoft account in the case that this occurs. Now, if you are part of a bigger organization and they have enforced BitLocker encryption on your drive and you get that message, I can't help you. Um, it's, it's unlikely you can help yourself. You will need to contact your IT support people and say, hey, I'm getting this message. I need to get into my drive. What do I do? Because they have the back end access to be able to do that. You won't. I won't. We should. That's just the way security works. Alrighty, guys. So what do you think? Um, would you be sick if you got a message like that? I know I would be. I know that when I looked at it at seven o'clock on Sunday night, I'm like, I was going to log off. I guess I'm working until we get this fixed. Uh, I, and, and yeah, it would be sickening for me. Uh, have I said something that you disagree with? Have I said something that's raised more questions for you? I know I haven't shown you how to go and get all that information. I may do that in future podcasts or I might do a whole tutorial around it. Just remember that it is possible to get. Okay. Um, if you do have questions, if you do have comments, please leave them wherever you're watching this video, watching or listening to this video. If you want to come across and join my community, ask charlieleatham.locals.com. You can join the conversation there, leave comments, start conversations, whatever you want to do. It is for business owners to connect and discuss these sorts of things and these sorts of frustrations that you have as well. If this video was useful, I'd appreciate it if you'd give it a like, maybe even share it with a friend. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe to the channel and ring the notification bell so you find out when I drop more content. And guys, I'll see you the day after tomorrow. Bye. Hey there, thanks so much for tuning in to Rise and Shine, your daily business tech boost. I hope today's episode gave you some actionable insights that will make your business tech work smarter for you. If you found value, be sure to subscribe, leave a review and share it with other small business owners who could use a daily boost. For more tips, tools and resources, visit www.askcharlieleatham.com. Until next time, keep rising, keep shining, and let's make tech simple together.